All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about and going into why you shouldn't buy brand new knives. Now, what I mean by this, and I think that this is potentially an even more poignant kind of case nowadays because we deal with so many brand new knives and even things like multi-tools like the Leatherman Arc and other, you know, like really just hyped up, super popular, super, you know, on trend kinds of knives in the knife world and the prices of new and trendy knives can get undoubtedly a bit out of hand. So today I thought I'd talk about why you shouldn't buy brand new knives. Okay, so let's jump into it. So first off, let's talk about why you shouldn't buy knives that are brand new from factory. So with few exceptions, a lot of brand new knives come with a pretty sharp, and especially nowadays, a pretty steep sticker price, especially, especially Benchmade in particular, but undoubtedly knives, if you want to buy them brand new, are almost along the signs, or the lines I should say, of like cars where they have this steep, you know, price just to buy a brand new one. And the moment it pulls off the lot, it loses quite a bit of that valuation. Knives are definitely in a similar boat. And if you want to buy a brand new knife, you can expect to pay a lot in that value. Won't always, sometimes it is retained, but a lot of times it isn't always retained. And so, by buying off the secondary market and not buying a brand new knife, you can end up saving yourself quite a bit of money. Now, once again, I wanna say that buying secondary isn't always foolproof, and there are a lot of instances where buying you know, off the secondary, especially once again, if it's a very hyped up brand of knife or a particular model or blade steel or a limited edition sprint run, um, you know, buying secondary can actually cost more. However, I definitely think that um, avoiding a lot of those sprint runs in the long run is beneficial. And so that kind of leads me to the second point, and that is being anti-sprint run. Now, like I was saying, I think the world as a whole, like just in general, and I think there's this kind of unfortunate marketing trend where, you know, people, especially kind of companies and, you know, clever marketing, um, people try to push you know, the idea of like, ooh, limited editions, brand new steels, brand new handles, colorations, and a lot of that ends up driving, you know, prices through the roof for things. However, if you take a lot of the same like knives, like I, this one I was just holding here, I think the Manix 2 is a good example of this where there's an REC version of this knife that uses CTS-204P, which is essentially uh, on the same performance level as M390 on the same performance level as um, 20 CV. And you can legitimately get the Manix in these other steels. You can even get it in things like Maximet um, for lower prices than the REC model. Now, will it have the same cool avocado styled, you know, handle color and blade color? No, but it's the same exact performance or same blade shape, you know, same uh, or similar blade performance as far as edge retention, corrosion resistance, and so by choosing a non-hyped model, you can actually end up getting the same functional knife, but for a lot less. In addition to this, like I said, there are definitely ways on the secondary market, if you are cautious and diligent and know what you're looking for, you can scoop up very good deals. Now, don't get me wrong, the biggest, I would say the biggest risk about secondary market is of course getting scammed. And so there is that, you know, as a potential problem. And certainly um, the other kind of issue, it's more of a, a personal thing for people like myself who are impatient. You know, if I go down to my local knife specialty store, I can buy a knife and have it in my hands instantaneously, right? I give them the money, they give me the knife. Whereas, you know, if I give someone online money or if I give Blade HQ money, you know, I get a knife 
a week later per se. So there is a, that kind of disadvantage as well. But by and large, I will say, especially when it comes to, you know, the secondary market, you know, for the most part, do your due diligence. I think there are a lot of communities or subgroups of communities where there are kind of like go, no go kind of things where people, you know, can get established names um, for themselves. And, you know, I've luckily, once again, had a lot of great experiences and I've traded knives, sold knives and got some really good deals going for it and um, you know knowing what you want and what you're willing to settle for and I think that that's the biggest thing um, for me is you know having the patience level of you know like knowing what you want but also having the understanding of knowing what you're willing to settle for and so for me like I said I've been able to beat a lot of hype with things like you know the Manix 2 and other knives that I have here um, that you know they're not the most you know cool model like this you know black G 10 CPM S 110 V blade steel. This is a definite high performance knife. It doesn't necessarily look like it, but I got a really great deal on it. And once again, for the value of this knife, I think I paid, gosh, I'm trying to remember. I think I paid about $140, um, you know, on the secondary market for the Spyderco Manix 2. And so that's a Manix 2 in CPM S 110 V. And that's a lot of, there's a lot of bang for your buck. Like I'm not going to lie. And so once again it was secondary and it was used but I was able to take this on my Wicked Edge polish up that S110V you know and overall it's a good condition knife no real problems and you know for 140 to 150 bucks I'm trying to remember I can't quite remember but 140 150 bucks somewhere in that range I was able to get a very high performance knife that is really pretty good it's gonna you know um, honestly keep up with some of the best knives out there so anyways, uh, buying off the secondary market without making this too long winded is, in my opinion, one of my favorite things. Not only is it fun and it kind of is a challenge to, you know, like find what you want. And also, like I said, being able to set goals of, you know, what am I willing to, you know, live with? What are things that, you know, like the knife might not be perfect, but these are some things that I can work around. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was, you know, a fun video. And as always, guys, hopefully you learned something. God bless, and I'm out.